Hi there. Welcome to Providence Hill Presents Exit Stage Right with Martha Sullivan. This is a show where we talk about ways that you can build, buy, and sell your business so you can exit stage right into your next adventure whenever that time comes and meet your needs for financial security. Welcome. I'm Martha Sullivan and I am your host. It is great to see you here today. As you may recall from last week's show, we started talking about um, the way things are going these days in terms of the economy and the markets. And wouldn't it be great if we had a crystal ball to help us understand where things were going in terms of the economy? We certainly um, have had our, our ups and downs over the last two and a half years between COVID and um, COVID and supply chain issues and then the uh, global unrest in terms of uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine and all sorts of, of craziness that we are indeed facing um, inflationary times like we haven't seen for many, many decades. Now, whether that inflation is due to supply and demand issues, the labor shortages, opportunistic pricing, whichever the case may be, it's, it's very real. And while consumer sentiment has um, generally been good this year, we are starting to see it um, go down and consumer sentiment is is the essence of what um, how we feel about our finances and the prospects of our finances. It is an economic indicator and consumer spending is a different indicator, but they're closely aligned. Cons uh, consumer spending has has been strong this year and it's still, relatively strong, but it's not, it's not as vital, as vibrant as, as it was. We're starting to see its, its optimism um, in spending come down a little bit um, from the rate that it was. And so that's why I thought it was important for us to, you know, kind of go back and refresh some of the things that that really were important at the beginning of the pandemic when things um, when there was even greater uncertainty and we needed to figure out ways that we could um, stay in the game at the same time demand for our products might be dwindling um, you know it, at the beginning of the pandemic it was very harsh for some um, with inflation Again, it can be one of those things where some industries do, still do fine dur during inflationary times, where others actually do see a pullback on the part of their customers and their customer spending. So it, we are in uncharted territory and every business needs to figure out on their own where do we play offense? Where do we play defense? How do we set ourselves up to really watch for the signals and the signs of when we might need to pivot or retrench or do something differently? And so that's what we, we started the conversation last week and we're, we're continuing it this week um, about the things that, that we, can, we can do. Yeah, as I mentioned last week, I, I live in Wisconsin and, and like many parts of the country during the summer, we can have some rather uh, nasty storms that pop up. And we recently had one night that was, was gangbusters. And, you know, the airport um, reported like three inches of rain in, in a two day period. Um, but that night it was clear that the weather was gonna be rocky through, you know, like three or four in the morning. So we, we could either hang out in the basement all night and get no sleep, or we could take, take charge and take control of what we could control. And that's really what um, we're talking about here in these two programs as well, is taking control of what 
what we can control. Now, we, we talked um, about a variety of things last week, and I'll just highlight them very, very quickly. One was um, in taking control of what you can, making sure that your financials are up to speed and you understand how to read them. You are reading them. You are using them as the management tool that they're meant to be. And you have your arms around your cash flow uh, projections and budgets. You understand um, whether you have enough uh, working capital, that is enough uh, liquidity to uh, handle all your obligations. And you're, you're truly putting together an updated plan. A sh it may be the next six month plan, but you have a plan um, that understands the current state of your business, um, where you're at with your sales, what are, your, what are you forecasting for sales, what's going on in your operations, your management and your staffing. And you're really harnessing the power of your mission control command central, your key team to make sure you're staying on top of it. We did a, a quick dive into um, talking about six key areas in, in areas of focus for your group that were important for your group uh, to stay tuned into. And just to refresh what those six um, key points were, they were um, making sure that your team, your mission control expectations were set out pretty clearly. That was the first thing we talked about last week, that we were taking steps to protect our workforce. While in COVID, protecting our workforce took on a meaning of, of health and safety, um, these days, with how goofy the um, labor market is, really comes down to retention and thinking through um, steps you can take to enhance your retention and things to be mindful of if you indeed do need to retrench and take your workforce back down because you, your company is seeing um, decline in demand. And that was the second thing we talked about. And then we talked about making sure you were staying engaged and taking care of your customers' needs, because even in inflationary times, customers still have needs. They just may be evolving. Those were the first things we talked about last week. This week, we're going to cover issues around how to uh, enhance your supply chain management, focusing on operational efficiencies that you can achieve, and then ultimately wrapping it back around with your team and the action plan that you are going to take around those, these areas um, and, and, and stress testing your plans. So let's dive into it, shall we? So, Supply chain management. Now, st stabilization of your, your supply chain is a critical priority, even as supply chain issues may be easing for your particular product or services. So it, there really it comes a time when you want to stay on top of where you're at with your inventory. Do you have adequate inventory? You may actually have more than adequate inventory in some aspects of your business, but insufficient in others. So you're going to need to stabilize how you're um, handling that, but also make sure that you have adequate um, cross-peer resources of, uh, of uh, and understanding where your suppliers are at, your tier one, your absolute critical um, suppliers and your go-to suppliers, those are your tier ones. Your tier twos are your backup or your um, lower volume suppliers. And where are they at in resolving their supply chain um, issues? And how are you going to balance that? Do you need to change your reliance on one over the other? Um, and does that even involve potentially product redesign and thinking that through? 
by all means, be on a routine basis researching your alternatives for your resources and understanding what their qualifications are, what their capability and their capacity is, as well as what their, their cost and their quality control parameters might be. If you do move to supplier B instead of supplier A, what does that do in your production processes? What does that do in your quality control? How does that change your logistics issues and your lead times and all of that sort of stuff? So it's important that we get our arms around that and not take it for granted. I think one of the reasons why so many companies were caught flat-footed when the recession, or not the recession, I'm sorry, when the pandemic hit was because we had bought in so significantly into just-in-time principles where we had a deep, deep relationship with a key supplier and everything was showing up just in time when we never really considered contingencies and backup plans and safety stock needs and things of that nature. Well, those are all solid operations business practices that really deserve um, attention on a, a reasonable basis. This is review and, and introspection, I mean, on a reasonably timed basis to make sure that it, it does make sense with the changing um, scenarios in markets and, and resources. Inventory management is another area, and I see that that is off center a little, I apologize. Inventory management really comes down to doing modeling around your, um, what you think your, your needs will be within your customer demand, as well as within your production demand, if you're in manufacturing or your purchasing demand, if you are in, distribution. So you want to look at that and, and model out your forecast of customer demand, not just at the financial level, but also at the, at the product and service level. So you can have a sense of where might it be short term? Where might it be longer term? Are you surging? Are you plummeting? What's causing those surges or those drawbacks? What might it look like as a new normal after the supply chain and uh, inflationary factors get back under control and in a new normal? Will those surge levels increase or might they um, flatten out and stabilize at a different level or even go to a lower level because it's replaced by pent up demand or, or other things. So think about how you're going to manage, manage and navigate your inventory um, along those lines and your demand modeling and forecasting. Take the time to do it. Don't just um, assume that things will be all right. The other thing to do is to um, dive a little bit deeper into your inventory management systems and think about the critical components that make up your products and services. Is it, um, is it labor? Is it uh, certain materials? Is it reliance on outsource resources? And where are you getting those from? How stable are those um, resources? Or do you need to think about contingency and alternatives? Um, and are there ways of redeploying resources or components to other products or services as necessary? Again, thinking about identifying um, what those components might be and what the sources and resources might be for them. There might be um, the need to ration certain resources that you have, whether it be your um, components or your services, your, your um, labor force. And because labor is, is an inventory item, if you think about it that way as well, and know that we're going to dedicate resources that could go here, here, and here, 
we're going to ration them and put more over here, fewer over here, and none over here, depending on what the situation might be. The other thing with inventory, um, you know, in, I've talked with some business leaders that in the face of the pandemic early on, they, um, they built up their inventories. And so now they have more inventory than they actually need. Take time and review your inventory for items that may be slow moving or obsolescent. Obsolete, I should say. Obsolescent. Um, in my role as a CFO way back when, um, one of the things that uh, we were facing cash flow challenges in this one particular scenario. And I came to view inventory um, in the coldest, most calculating CPA type way. And that is the exclusive purpose of inventory is to convert it to cash. That's why you have inventory. Yes, that's very CPA-like, isn't it? It's not customer-like at all. But if there is inventory that your customers aren't wanting, then it's not doing them any good and it's not doing you any good. So convert that stuff to cash through promotions and, and whatnot. If, it's, if you can get a tax write-off for donating it because it's going nowhere, do that. Um, so stay on top of your inventory um, management needs. So that is supply chain management. Let's bridge over into operational efficiencies. You want to make sure that you are optimizing your capacity under certain constraints. That those um, constraints might be labor related, they might be uh, material related, but pull together um, your command central team and your advisors, tap into your resources and come up with creative solutions if you are facing capacity constraints. There, are may, there may be ways that you can look to alternative um, sources for the, the capacity um, outlets. So give that thought as well. Think about ways that you can analyze and problem solve for your supplier disruptions or staffing interruptions or redeployment to other departments. Again, for creating ways that you can streamline your operations and cut waste or cut down time that may be um, impacting your profitability. Search for other potential process um, improvements or other efficiencies. If, there are, if you do have, let's say, a works, uh, uh, work cell that is slower, maybe empower them to do some R&D around the work that they do. Are there things that they can come up with so that um, we can streamline their work when the volume picks back up? Are there things that can be done to maybe um, within the vein of R&D and uh, create a competitive advantage that would be long lasting in, um, in the future. So there are definitely aspects that, that can be um, achieved and uh, put in place to really harness operational efficiencies during a slowdown and especially coming out of the slowdown. Now, why is this important? You may recall in last week's show, we talked about a 2010 Harvard review study that suggested that, um, well, it didn't suggest, it actually found that in the 2008-2009 recession, the Great Recession, if you will, um, those companies that stayed engaged 
in marketing. They stayed engaged with their employees. They stayed engaged with R&D and investing in operational efficiencies, investing in their customer relationships. Despite the recession, those companies that stayed engaged throughout the recession, as opposed to turtling in and cutting spending and just like, okay, we're just going to huddle down until we get past this. Those companies that went all in did 26% better than their competitors coming out of the recovery. Those competitors that turtled struggled even more. They had a slower return in the recovery than their counterparts, which is why um, you know, doing this work and putting your shoulder to the wheel and staying all in during a recession can be very, very valuable, but you need to be strategic about it. So institutionalize um, your, your approach to operational risk management. As you're trying these creative solutions to streamlining your operations, to protecting your workforce, to staying engaged with your customers, keep track of what you're trying. Keep track of, did that work? Did that not work? What part of it worked? What part of it didn't work? Figure out what lessons you can learn from it and then get back on the horse and ride it again and see what lessons you can learn from the next attempt. The more attempts you, you have, the better chances you have of hitting that solution and um, being successful. Establish your risk management protocols in terms of what are we going to do? What are our contingency plans? Um, in the face of customer pullback, in the face of supplier disruptions? What are we going to do about um, staffing constraints? Maybe we have turnover. Maybe we have to encourage turnover um, or we need that we need to redeploy. Understand and map out, talk about and institutionalize understanding what your metrics are that will be your trigger points. We monitor this and when we see this, we know we have to do that. We need to react and scale something up. We need to react and scale something down. Cross training is, is vital in today's um, workforce environment so your team can be um, versatile and um, agile. So, cross-train and make sure that you've got your backup contingency plans there without, I would say though, without necessarily whipsawing the employees so that you're threatening retention. There's a balancing act there. Work on your infrastructure so that you have a strong management team. So you have the systems and the processes and procedures in place um, to help you navigate moving forward in good times and in other um, potential pullbacks that just always come. There are business cycles. It's a fast, it's a fact of life. Um, and then document it. We, we think that documentation is um, an afterthought, kind of a pain in the tail. Well, it's really important to be documenting your procedures and your um, approaches to things. Then the other aspect of all of this that is super, super important, wrapping this all back around so we can um, indeed be comfortable with our plans and that our plans are working. We talked at the very beginning of this conversation about Command Central and making sure that your team is all on the same page by virtue of having a action plan that can, can, you can put into place and, and manage by. Well, part of having an action plan also comes down to our third point of conversation today. And that is stress testing 
your action plans. In the face of a potential um, recession or potential um, slowdown in your customer demands, it's important that you stress test your action plans and talk about the stress testing with your team. This should be something that is core in the command central or the mission control conversations. Getting input from um, the, the initiative owners. So if you have your plan of attack for each one of these areas, such as people, leadership, supply chain, operations, customers, and, and marketing, what uh, is the best scenario? What is the most likely scenario? What is a worst case scenario? And what are our plans in each of those situations? And what are the triggers that we want to be monitoring for? And considering both the short-term and the long-term aspects of, of the process. Test it. You build, a, build a, a financial model that says, okay, if consumer demand drops by X, this is what it's gonna look like. What do we need to do uh, along those lines and engage the team in those conversations. Don't have it be just a financial spreadsheet exercise of one person. This is the real value of stress testing is talking about these issues and getting the ideas from your leaders um, in how to, to handle it. And then work with your circle of advisors so they can also assist you in the process. Strike your balance. Now, it, referring back to that Harvard survey, those companies that were striking that balance between achieving the operational efficiencies and staying in the game in the face of downturns, they were the ones that fared better than those companies that go draconian and cut everything and turtle. So balance your own view in terms of short-term, long-term, what can you do in the short-term to set the stage for the better long-term with your products, with your processes, and with all of your relationships. So next steps really are to make sure that you are planning a pragmatic action plan. As I said, the best, the worst, and the most likely plans, your short-term and long-term views, and stress-tested through a cash flow and income statement projection. Talk through those projections with your team. Gather ideas and, and be thorough, but not so thorough as you get down and you're arguing over a gnat on some donkey's tail. Just um, really have sufficient focus on the key financial drivers and what's going to make a difference in your um, environment using what's called a materiality threshold to keep it simpler. Do we really care about the expenses 50 bucks and below, 100 bucks and below, 1,000 bucks and below? Um, that's that's a, a threshold of materiality is what do we consider to be big enough to really move the needle? Um, and don't get bogged down in, in little zeros. Get, get yourself geared toward the, the more zero level in a materiality threshold. That will keep your analysis close enough because again, it's just a plan, it's just a hypothesis. You don't need to get down to the Nats backside. I'll be diplomatic here. Let your plans buoy your calm in the storm. Um, I, I really believe that having a plan of action, taking control of what you can is what makes all the difference in the world. I slept better that night that I knew that the weather was gonna be crummy and I needed to make sure that if I need to go hauling tail down to the basement at two o'clock in the morning, I'd have my phone, I'd have 
have sweat so I didn't freeze down below. We had water down there, whole nine yards. We were prepared if we needed to go, we could go. And if we didn't need to go, we could sleep calmly. Same thing is true in our business. Understand, yeah, your plan isn't going to be perfect. It's not even going to be accurate, but it's a plan. It's a guide. And, and don't let perfectionism stop you because the value of a plan isn't ultimately what hits the paper. It's the process of thinking through the plan and and having some measures to gauge against, um, not necessarily be 100% accurate on. And then leverage plans. Use them within your team to help you track your assumptions and your alternatives and be that foundation for your problem solving and your um, remaining agile, ultimately, and, and navigating the storms that and unsettled waters that we're in these days. That's it for our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Exit Stage Right. Um, I would be remiss uh, if I did not mention our workshops that we offer on a regular basis, uh, Get a Grip as well as Finding True Value. Our next Get a Grip program starts uh, the first week of September. It is, if you're not familiar with Get a Grip, it is a seven week program that was created by my colleague, Ray. And we, we dive into little video um, snippets that you watch on your own schedule. And then once a week, you get together with a cohort of other business owners and talk about the intersection of our businesses, um, the business profitability and the value with our personal lives and our personal um, financial plans. Critical, important conversation that introduces how the valuation of your business is a very important metric and really does overlap into your personal um, wealth and financial security. So I strongly encourage you to check out our workshops and um, consider joining us for the September um, cohort. And to do that, um, I will share my screen in just a second. You can go to um, our website and uh, click on or click on uh, the QR code. It will take you to our provenancehill.com website directly to our workshops page where you can check out those workshops. And um, for the Win Win Women TV folks, um, as well as others that may be watching, if you sign up for the September uh, cohort, um, we are uh, excited to offer a 10% discount by using the Get Ready 10 discount code. So check it out. I think you'll find it to be informative and very valuable to you. So again, thank you for joining us today at Ex uh, Prominence Hill Presents Exit Stage Right with Martha Sullivan. This is a show where we talk about ways that you can build, buy, and sell your business and exit stage right into your next adventure with the financial security you desire. I have got a really good feeling about this. Go ahead and transform your business and exit stage right.